Welcome to Electronics and More. In today's video, I would like to show you an extremely useful circuit. The one you see here is a 12 volt lamp dimmer. Keep in mind, this can also be used as a current control if you'd like to power up small motors as well. The circuit you see here is from TalkingElectronics.com. It's an excellent website, especially if you're new with electronics. I'll post a link to that website in the video description area as well as the link to the schematic. The schematic is found under a section called 70 interesting circuits. To me this circuit is one of the simplest and best controls that you can use. If you have a vehicle or a boat and you'd like to have a whole bunch of lights, it could be LEDs, it could be regular incandescent lamps, and you want to be able to control the brightness of all those lamps, this is the circuit for you. It only requires nine components and it does not get much easier than you see right here. In a minute I will be demonstrating. The circuit requires a 555 IC. The setup is A stable, so you're going to have pulses coming off of pin 3. Now the way Colin designed the circuit, you have a PNP transistor here, and you have an NPN, and I tried it this way and it works extremely well. The only problem I had with the circuit is that the resistor does like to get fairly hot and I used a 5 watt and a 10 watt using a 1 amp load and it does get hot. So what I decided to do was to ditch both of these transistors and the resistor and I took a MOSFET and connected that up instead. So from pin 3 you go into a 100 ohm resistor that goes to the gate of the MOSFET. You want to make sure you use a low RDS and what that refers to is the level of resistance when the MOSFET is turned on between the drain and the source. You want that as low as possible. You get the maximum amount of current, the lowest voltage drop across the drain and the source. And you also have a lot less heating. The one I use for this project is an IRF540. If you would like to handle a lot of current, then I suggest you use an IRF Z44N. This works based on pulses, so the longer the pulse being delivered from pin 3, the brighter the light's going to be, and the shorter the on pulse, the dimmer the light is going to be. The purpose of the 20K resistor on the gate is to act as a pull down resistor, so every time pin 3 goes off, you want to make sure the gate is pulled off. You don't want any chance of this MOSFET not going completely off. You can have all sorts of problems with heating if it remains partially on during the off cycle. So definitely add the 20K pull down resistor and you will have no problems with the circuit whatsoever. The two 1K resistors could be quarter watt resistors, the 4001 diode, then you have a 50K ohm potentiometer. That does not have to be able to handle a lot of current so it could be a very small pot. Over here you have a 0.1 microfarad, which is a 104 capacitor, nonpolar. And if you eliminate this whole section here from pin 3, in order to handle a lot more current and eliminate any heating, you would connect up this circuit here on pin 3. Let me give you a quick demonstration. For this demonstration, I'll be using this test light right here. It's 12 volts, and the bulb is around 400 milliamps. It's incandescent. We'll be using 12 and a half volts in the power supply. Keep in mind, you do not have to use this with 12 volts. You can use it as low as four and a half volts. You can use six volts, nine volts, and 12 volts. If you would like to use lower voltage around three, then you would have to replace the 555 timer with a CMOS 555 timer. Right over here, this is the back of the MOSFET. The lamp is running fairly bright right now. If I turn it this way, you see how nice it'll go all the way, all the way down. This will never get hot, whether it's fully on or fully off. I could put three, four, five amps, and that will still remain relatively cool. If you are going to be using a lot of current, if you're going to be controlling a lot of lighting, definitely connect a heat sink to the MOSFET. Go back this way. 
And as I said earlier, you are not going to get a simpler current control than what you see right here. Let me connect this to my scope and I'll show you what the pulses look like that are driving the MOSFET on and off. I'm going to be connecting the probe right over here to pin 3. That goes to ground. What I'm going to do now is zoom in on the scope and then I'm going to rotate the dial the other direction. When I do, it's going to get dimmer and you're going to see the display on the scope change. So let me zoom in so you can get a closer look. Right now you can see the light is on full brightness right over there. And you can see we have a peak voltage of around 11.56. There will be a little bit of a drop across that MOSFET, but not much. You can see we're pretty close to the top. It gets a little spiky if I go all the way. But this is the on pulse at the top. Down here is the off, so you can see it's off for a very short duration, and it's on most of the time. That's why the lamp is brighter. Now if I turn it the other way, you'll see the lamp getting dimmer. Now we have right around there, it's about equal on to equal off. It's about half brightness. And when I keep going the other way, you can see it bottoms out along the bottom edge. And we're off like 95% of the time. You're only seeing some spikes shooting up. Let me back off a little bit. Go back the other way. It gets wider again. So that's how it works. It works excellent considering the amount of components that are involved and also how much current that it can handle. Also note that you're going to have to make sure that the wires can handle the current going through the load or all the lamps that you're going to be using through the MOSFET to the battery negative. Do not use thin wires or you will burn them up. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.